Cancer. There's lots of things in our environment that we come in contact with that can cause cancer. One of them is radiation. And the kind of radiation associated with cancer is ionizing radiation. That means your microwave's not going to do it. But this is the kind of thing you get when you go have an x-ray or you go have cancer treatment, an x-ray treatment. Um, so this, this ionizing radiation we use to treat cancer, but it can also cause cancer. Also in this group is the sun, solar radiation. All of these things can cause genetic damage. Second category of carcinogens are hormones. These as well can promote cancer or treat it. Some cancer cells are dependent on hormones. Tobacco. It's associated with lung, lip, laryngeal, esophageal, and bladder cancer. Infectious microorganisms. Now these are usually the viruses such as human papillovirus, and um, hepatitis B, but there are some bacteria as well, such as Heliobacter pylori. And there's a whole list of chemicals. Uh, the American Cancer Society uh, can give you a list of all the things that we think cause cancer, but the ones I've decided to share right now are asbestos, benzene, formaldehyde, cyclosporins, and many chemotherapy agents. Things we give people to treat cancer can also cause cancer. Neoplasia. That means new growth. Neoplasias can proliferate to form new tissue. They do not wait for signals from the body that the new tissue is needed. They just go ahead and do it because they're ignoring the signals to stop dividing. These cells often do not mature normally. They don't differentiate to do the job that the tissue is supposed to do. And they do not die off the, apoptos the apoptosis to keep the number of total cells constant. Cellular proliferation and differentiation. Both of these processes are controlled by genes. Proliferation results in generation of new cells. These new cells are produced through mitosis to meet the body's needs. They replace cells that have died off. And homeostasis keeps the proliferation and the apoptosis necrosis processes in balance. Neoplastic cells ignore the controls and that results in excessive cellular proliferation and the loss of cellular differentiation. That's anaplasia. Differentiation. Stem cells are the most undifferentiated cell in the body. They can become any type of cell. They are immature. They are potential tissues. From this one stem cell, you could get a breast cell, you could get a bone cell, you can get a heart cell. Depends on what's needed at the time. There are three categories. The stem cells mature. They grow up. They specify they develop into um, specific types of cells, the heart cells, bone cells, etc. And they also function appropriately. Carcinogenesis. How does cancer come about? How does it take root? Well, the first step is initiation. That's the initial contact with the carcinogen, or sometimes we call it the promoter. Sometimes it's not clear what the promoter is. Initiation, it's the trigger for the mutation to start. Then you move to the, promo the promotion stage. The carcinogen is still in the environment. The mutated cells grow and reproduce. 
but they are still dependent on the continued exposure to the promoter, the carcinogen. Now, common promoters, all those carcinogens that we just talked about, uh, chronic inflammation, hormones, chemicals in the environment, all of those, they're, ca they're, they're the um, carcinogens. Then there's the progression. The cancer that's growing, the tumor that's growing, is no longer dependent on exposure to the promoter. So this is the stage where, you know, you're not around asbestos anymore, but the asbestos damage to the cells um, has gotten to the point where it doesn't have to be there anymore. And the cancer continues. The role of genes. Now remember we said genes control it. The role of genes. Most cancers come from a single mutated gene and that's caused and that's called monoclonal origin. Genes are involved in the onset of cancer. When these genes are altered, cancerous transformations can occur. And there's three groups here, the mutator genes, the oncogenes, and the tumor suppressor genes. Mutator genes actually repair DNA. They protect the genome. That means they protect the genetic code of the individual. DNA, DNA repair is essential because of the constant damage that occurs from the internal and external environments. Oncogenes. These genes regulate cell proliferation and differentiation. Now, if they're activated, they can cause cancer. Tumor suppression genes. Genes that prohibit over-proliferation of cells. And they do that by regulating apoptosis. Tumor suppression genes maintain the balance of cell growth and cell death. Here we have a diagram that just talked about everything I just said. The normal cell comes into contact with a carcinogenic agent. At that point, DNA damage happens. Now, sometimes the DNA is repaired. Remember, we have those genes that repair DNA. But we're going to say in this case, DNA damage occurs, and that moves on to gene mutation. We have those three things going on with the genes that we just talked about. There's the activation of the growth-promoting oncogenes. Okay, it says make cells, make cells, make cells. Inactivation of the tu tumor suppression genes and alteration in the genes that control apoptosis. So we've got this whole process is saying make cells, make cells, don't kill them off. So we have unregulated cell differentiation and growth and we end up with a malignant neoplasm.